Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and today I am revisiting my Moonman T1 Terminator. I told you I'd be back. I'm back. And here it is. And the reason I'm revisiting it is because I couldn't get it apart before. So we're going to disassemble the Terminator right now. <laughs> Okay, so I'm all set up and ready to do some surgery on the T1. Some Terminator disassembly here. Remember folks, I am not a professional, so don't try this at home. Your mileage may vary. So the first thing I need to do is take the ink out of the Terminator and put it back in the bottle. Now you realize, of course, that I am taking a perfectly beautiful pen, which is writing fabulously. I've been writing with it for a number of days now, and I'm going to potentially destroy it, all because inquiring minds want to know my fragile little man. Well, what do you expect there, Canadian? How do you take this pen apart? So there. That's most of the ink out of there. Now when I re-ink this pen, I'm probably going to put some Lamy turquoise into it. So what I'm going to do now, there are a couple of things we need to get apart. One is I need to get that nib assembly out of there so that I can get the a whole nib and feed and the assembly and open up that throat wider. The other thing is we need to get these threads here released. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all rinse this out and do this. This is basically what you do with piston fillers that don't open up. You run them in and out constantly until it runs clear. I'm not going to bore you with it. So I'm going to do that until it runs clear. Then I'm going to take my ultrasonic cleaner machine here. I'm going to fill it with some hot water and a little bit of dish soap. And, and that hot water is going to be just tap hot. So as hot as it comes out of my tap, I'll put it in here and fill it up and run the vibrator there. Oh my! Run that for a couple of minutes. While it is still hot, I'm going to shoot some compressed air into that nib assembly. And so hopefully what will happen is the metal will still be hot, the plastic will cool down, and contract and will allow me to unscrew that nib assembly from the section. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it back in the hot water, let it soak, and I'm going to shoot this metal collar right here with some cold compressed air and hopefully that'll allow me to turn this this way without breaking it and release those threads. So the combination of the hot and the cold um, and the little bit of uh, soap uh, that is uh, in the water will hopefully release those two parts. So I'm going to do all that and then come right back. Okay, so I'm going to do an insert mea culpa here. It is now the morning of the posting of this video, so it's Saturday morning, February 15th. This video actually went up this morning at 6 a.m., even though I shot it a few days ago. As you will see in a few moments, when I shot the video of taking apart the T1, even though I got the end knob off and the cam sleeve out, I could not loosen the piston assembly at all. And I assumed it was glued in place. After the video went live, a couple of viewers commented that many piston fillers have reverse threads on the mechanism. Of course, my brain instantly went, duh. Dang it. Dang it. 
of course the threads would be reversed. If you are constantly turning the piston knob in one direction, the housing would be reversed to keep it from coming apart while you're filling the pen, of course. So a huge thank you to those viewers that let me know in the comments, and I'll post some of them here. As I said earlier, I'm not a professional, so don't try this at home, folks. I'm learning this stuff on my journey, and so many of you have been so helpful, I can't thank you enough. Of course, my hater stalker will get a huge kick out of me being wrong again. Oh my god, someone's wrong on the internet. Must flame! What work could be so important at this late hour? Someone is wrong on the internet! I took the video down while making this insert, and I'll put it back up immediately after I've finished editing it. But even though, as you can see, I got the pen apart, I have to comment that it isn't an easy process. And getting it back together again is like solving a Rubik's Cube. So this isn't for the faint of heart. They don't call me Dr. Danger for nothing, you know. Danger's my middle name. I had to use vice grips on the piston housing to get it to turn in the reverse direction, of course. It did come free, but it left scars on the metal. And you can see that here. I was very careful not to get the vice grips on those threads because then that cap would not screw down on top of it. But it did damage the paint and the metal slightly. I didn't receive the pen in a Moonman box, so I don't know if there were instructions or tools included. I don't think so because Chris said he was going to do surgery on one of his Twisby wrenches to make it fit the Moonman. But I think Moonman should include a tool with this pen, or at least make them available. I'll try to put this back together again here on camera, but there might be a lot of editing because it's uh, very tricky. And this is my third shot at it. So we'll go with the piston assembly first. Now, I'm going to do this a couple of times because I'm going to want to silicone grease this again before I put it back together again. So let's put the piston in. This piece goes on top of it and then reverse threads back into the barrel. Now I'm only gonna do it hand tight, so perhaps in the future I'll be able to take it apart without it damaging this. But here comes the tricky part. I had to do this by trial and error. And push this all the way out to the very end and just put it on a little bit and push the piston down as far as it'll go and leave that out as far as it will go and then take the knob you notice on the inside of the knob there's some uh, little serrations in there that match these little knobs on the end of the sleeve and I'm gonna push that in and I'm gonna turn it back you can feel it it sort of rises up and clicks that's going to be key to getting this so that the piston will close all the way down when it's closed. You see that's now that housing is now sliding around. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little gripper on there. There. We're going to do this again. And that comes out as far as it can. And I'm pushing it down onto those threads. And then engaging the piston there. So the key to getting that to be closed, <laughs> a third time's the charm. I did that the first time. Um, is actually getting it that 
cap on the uh, sleeve and turning it backwards until it clicks and then pushing it on so it engages with the threads as early as possible. And then it will travel the entire distance. And when you close it back up, there won't be a gap right there. I spent about 30 minutes trying to get that gap closed. So that worked. And we put the nib assembly back in. A little gripper material. Make sure I don't damage that lovely nib. Make sure it's straight. There we go. Et voila. So what follows is what I shot before I knew the threads were reversed. And I'll leave it here for full disclosure that I made a mistake assuming it was glued in. And I'm most humbly sorry for not knowing something that I couldn't have known but should have known before I knew it. Oh sure, that's what Canadian hospitality is all about. If you like, you can have all my money and my leg. If you're an expert, you've come to the wrong channel. So on with the show, this is it. So we've got good news and bad news. And not so bad news. The good news is that the warm bath with a little soapy water actually released the nib assembly, which is great. So now that I can release that, it means it opens up the throat of that section and you can get some silicone grease in there and you can clean it out a lot easier than having to pump it and repump it. The bad news was that it did not, no matter how much I heated up the barrel and cooled down the shaft, that threading mechanism right there that you can see is actually glued in. My That's my guess, it's glued in. Um, because once I turned this and you turn it all the way, it clicks a couple of times and eventually this cap comes off, releases the inner sleeve, and allows you to get at the, the rod. And you can see I've silicone greased that. But when you've got that off, you can access that little flatted spot right there. And I tried to put my wrench on it, and all I did was damage the paint on it. It just would not budge. Now, the good news is that you can't see that when it's closed. You can't see that damage on the paint. Um, but further bad news was that once I got that cap off, and you got the inner sleeve off that controls that piston camshaft there, um, getting it back together again was a real challenge. I spent about a half an hour monkeying with where that piston needs to be and where the sleeve needs to be and where this cap needs to be to be able to allow this to close all the way down when the piston's here. It was trial and error for quite a while and I thought that eventually I was just going to have to give up. But eventually I started seeing that I was making some progress. So overall good news, I have taken the Terminator apart and put it back together again, and it has not defeated me. So now we can put that collar back into the section. And this little rubber mat material comes in really handy for making sure you don't damage anything. And we align that nib and feed. And just re-examine to make sure that those two tines are lined up properly. But there it is. Disassembled, cleaned out, silicone greased, and put back together again successfully. With a few challenges. So let's put some ink in this guy. So I have some Lamy Turquoise that I'm going to put into my Terminator. Um, I did have J. Urban, Emerald of Chivor, and it's a particularly uh, 
tricky ink in terms of cleaning it out, so I'm not going to want to face that challenge again with this pen. Uh, so I'm going to put some more well-behaved ink in this pen, and it should be a good match. Certainly the cap and the pen match. And the third time is always the charm. And that's a nice ink. Do a little bit of a writing sample and then we'll be done. And here we are back with the Moon Man. Let me get a close up look at that nib. Looks like it's well aligned. The best way to tell if it's well aligned or not is to check on end like this to make sure those tines are together. Let's do a writing sample here. Very, very wet pen, as I mentioned before. And the ink is Lamy Turquoise. Excellent. It writes just like it did before, which I'm pleased with. And that ink is a little bluer than the pen, but uh, I think it's a, it's a nice match. So there you go. How to disassemble without totally destroying your Terminator, sorry, your Moon Man T1. And if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell so that you'll be notified of when another video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.